I've added a new 10 gigabit networking tool to my arsenal, and that is the QNAP Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit adapter, which is the one that I have in my hands here. I will share with you why you choose this one, what are some of the other ones that are out there, and what type of bottleneck this device solves for me. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I made a video about 10 gigabit networking and why it is a great idea for creative pros to have it in their workflow, especially if you have a NAS that's capable of running that either natively or via an add-on card. I'll leave a link up here and in the description below so you can check that out. Let me give you a little bit of background of my workflow and I will show you where the bottleneck comes in. So at the end of an event or a wedding, what we do is generally gather all of the memory cards together, download them to a laptop that we have on site. From there, all the images would then get copied to an SSD. On this SSD, my associate would take them and do the calling for me. This is picking the one star images, only picking like the sharp ones. If somebody's eyes closed, they would edit those out or not pick them in general. So all these things. The bottleneck doesn't really happen here. The bottlenecks happen when I come back to the studio and this is something that I do. So what I have is my laptop here with all the images on there. And most of the time, what I have been doing so far is using a SSD conduit to transfer the file between my laptop to my Mac Pro, the desktop machine that has a large storage pool in there. So I would use different type of SSDs. Some of them are going to be regular SATA SSD in a USB enclosure. This is a G Drive SSD, which is pretty good. Samsung T5, I don't have the T7 yet that can run at 1000 megabytes per second. And lastly, the SanDisk Extreme, which I don't recommend that you get this because it has a tendency to heat up a lot. It doesn't dissipate heat well and speeds tend to drop quite a bit when you're doing transfer. But either way, all these are the previous generation SSD you can only run at about 500 to 550 megabytes per second. So when we're thinking about this, this is going to take quite a bit to transfer the files, right? And we're talking about like maybe seven minutes here, but I also then have to download other cards too. So the faster I can transfer and do everything, the less time I have sitting in front of my computer. And that is my primary goal here. And I'm always thinking in seconds and minutes and not minutes and hours. All right. So typically at an event, because we're photographing 36 and 45 megapixel cameras in raw at full size, we're generally generating between I would say a typical 150 gigabytes per event. At, 400 mega, at 450 megabytes per second, we're looking at about seven minute transfer. At 70 megabytes per second, that is USB 2.0 territory. We're looking at 40 minutes, that is a lot of time. But seven minutes is still a lot of time because we got to think about one thing here is that because we're transferring the file from our laptop or my laptop to this device, whatever time it takes, seven minutes, that's one round. And then I also then have to plug this into my Mac Pro and transfer it again. So whatever the time it takes there, we have to multiply that by two. So on an ideal condition, we're looking about between 14 to 16 minutes. Generally, it's going to be a little bit more than that because some files don't transfer as fast. And most of the time, you're not going to get 450 megabytes per second, like sustained speed throughout. And then afterwards, we would back up the file to the NAS system. So this device here, this QNAP, is helping me solve that problem because this Q&A T310 G1S, and I purchased this to use in my studio. This is not sponsored by QNAP or anything like that at all. It's one that I've done a lot of research on, and I just like the design of it. I purchased and use it in the studio. So with these one, I can transfer 150 gigabytes of data at around 600 to 650 megabytes per second. That takes four minutes. But the amazing part about this four minutes is that it's literally directly from the laptop to my Mac Pro at four minutes. So I don't have to use a conduit to go between one device to a storage device and then a storage device to the Mac Pro. The downside to this is that I don't have an SSD backup of the file, but then I'm going to have all the copies of the images on the NAS anyway. So I generally have that backup and then I also back it up to another eight terabyte archive drive like that goes off site. So it's pretty much safe so far in the workflow. This, so this is helping me solve that bottleneck. And you're saying like, yes, this device costs that much and it helps you solve like that little bottleneck that you have. Like, yes, I want to be able to transfer the file fast. And that's my goal here. And that's the reason why I got this. And this is the networking device that I use or the switch. This is a QNAP. This is a QSW M408 
to see. I made a video about this. You can check that out too about like going through the process of stealing and why I picked this one. So now let's talk about this adapter I got and why I purchased this one. There are a variety of brands out there. For example, QNAP makes two models. They make this one, which is the one that I have with the SFP Plus module that plugs in here. And they also make another one, which I'm going to show you on the screen right now. This is the one that has a copper RJ45 connection. So you can plug in a patch cable that is capable of doing 10 gigabit. And you can run that between the switch and the computer or the switch and this adapter and then the computer. So certainly you can do that. Sonnet does make a few of them. They make one with the copper connection and also for the SFP plus module that you can use fiber optic. So there's like the different ones there. OWC, Other World Computing, also makes one. This happens to be the Ethernet connection only version. And if you go on Amazon, there are quite a few that you can pick from. And one of them also that comes up on my list of research is the Cable Matter. This is the Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit, again, with Ethernet connection. And the only thing that I don't really like about a lot of these other brands is that if you take a look at them, they have a tendency to be bulky, kind of big. The one thing I like about QNAP is that it's fairly small and compact. Even when you compare it to like the Sonnet one, it's huge and it looks ugly. This one I can throw in a bag if I ever need to, but most of the time it would just stay in the studio. But because it's sitting so close to your computer, I like to look at something that looks somewhat nice and is in a fairly compact design. All right, so let's go over the reason why I choose to have the SFP Plus module. And that is because I do a lot of networking. So I have a lot of these modules laying around and fiber optic cable. So with this, what I can simply do is take one of these fiber optic module, plug it in like so. And now I can plug in my fiber optic cable. And on the other end, there is a Thunderbolt 3 connection. So it comes with this cable, the Thunderbolt 3. It doesn't come with any SFP, SFP Plus module, so that's something to keep in mind. And then I would just simply plug this into my laptop, and now I have 10 gigabit connection on my Mac computer, which is really cool. And there's an indicator light here that shows you that it's on, so it's really awesome. Now, let's say I don't have a fiber cable uh, and all those things. What can I do? Well, this gives me the flexibility because I also have an SFP Plus module that is SFP that will take this connection and convert it to a copper RJ45 connection. So I can simply plug that in and I can just plug in a regular patch Ethernet cable. As long as it's compatible with 10 gigabit, this will work just fine without any issues. So this is the reason why I choose to go with the SFP Plus one instead of this one that has just pretty much the Ethernet connection. But so far in the testing and speed, I'm able to get um, speed that are pretty good running this. When I connect between this device um, via the network switch directly to my Mac Pro, the speed tends to be around like maybe 450, 400 megabyte per second or so. It tends to be a little bit slower. And I think a lot of that has to do with like multiple different OS overheads, file transfer and all those things. But even at that, even if I'm just spending seven minutes, it's seven minutes one way and it's not seven minutes one way to get it onto an SSD and then onto another you know, computer on, or onto the Mac Pro. And when I tried to transfer this directly to my Synology NAS with 10 gigabit card, this was able to run at 650, 700 megabyte per second. So we're looking about four, four minute transfer for about 150 gigabytes of data, which is actually not bad at all. So, and this device is helping me solve the bottleneck in the workflow by a little bit, because after a wedding, what I typically do is download the images generate the preview and pick anywhere between 20 to 30 images and make an online app for them within about 24 to 48 hours after the event. So being able to have the computer generate the preview quick, like the faster I can do it, the better it is. And this helps shave some of that transfer time because once I transfer the file, I still need the computer to generate all the Lightroom previews and that definitely takes time. Hopefully you find this Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit adapter guide helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, give this a like, Subscribe, hit the bell if you're new, and remember, in art we trust.